Cerebrospinal fluid examination. Cerebrospinal fluid examination is done for diagnosis of central nervous system abnormalities. Samples are obtained by lumbar, cisternal or lateral cervical puncture or through ventricular cannulas or shunts. Sample collection, storage and transportation. Typically, three to four tubes are drawn. Tube 1 for biochemistry. Tube 2 for microbiology. Tube 3 for cell counts and tube 4 for cytology. In a traumatic tap, tube 3 must be used for maximum tests. Never use tube 1 for microbiology as it will have contamination with skin bacteria. Recommendation regarding CSF partitioning and storage states that 12 milliliters of CSF should be partitioned thus into 3 to 4 sterile tubes. It is important that the CSF is not allowed to sediment before partitioning. Sample stability. CSF should be analyzed immediately, that is, less than one hour after collection. The stability of the CSF sample varies depending on the procedures ordered. Hematologic analysis of CSF samples should be performed within one hour of fluid aspiration. Red blood cells and white blood cells have limited stability in CSF because CSF is hypotonic and cells can rapidly lyse. Timing is especially critical for WBCs since both the number and type of cells present are clinically important in diagnosing cases of meningitis as well as detecting CNS leukemic involvement. CSF samples for hematologic testing should be maintained at room temperature prior to testing. Refrigeration is also not recommended for some culture specimens since fastidious organisms such as Haemophilus influenzae and Neisseria meningitidis may not survive at refrigerated temperatures. Store 3 to 4 milliliters at 4 degrees centigrade general investigations, investigation of bacteria and fungi, antibody testing, polymerase chain reaction and antigen detection. Larger volumes 10 to 15 milliliters are necessary for certain pathogens like mycobacterium tuberculosis, fungi or parasites. In this lesson, we will discuss only some aspects of CSF examination, such as physical examination and the cell counts. The biochemistry tests follow the same principles as explained under endpoint chemistries. If your facility does not do cultures, please follow the guidelines described above for storage and transportation of samples to the nearest microbiology laboratory. Gross examination. Color. Hold the sample against a white paper and compare it to a tube of distilled water. If it has any color at all, it is abnormal. Cause can be because of presence of blood, either due to a pathology or due to a trauma during the procedure. Yellow color in CSF is called xanthochromia, due to previous hemorrhage and lysis of RBCs. Clarity. Normal CSF is clear. Turbidity is seen when there is an increase in the number of cells. Coagula. Fibrin clots can be found if the protein content in the CSF is very high. A clot is also possible when under a traumatic tap condition. Grossly bloody CSF. It is possible to distinguish if the presence of blood was due to subarachnoid hemorrhage or traumatic tap. Procedure for CSF cell count. Equipment required. New bore chamber. Microscopic slides. Leishman stain. Centrifuge. Total count. Mix the specimen thoroughly by gentle inversion at least 10 times. Using a pipette, transfer the undiluted fluid to a hemocytometer counting chamber. Fill both the sides of the chamber using proper technique. Allow the cells to settle. Focus under low power and adjust condenser and diaphragm for maximum visualization. Switch to high power or 40x. Adjust if necessary. And 
For an undiluted sample, usually all nine squares are counted. Average the results from both sides of the chamber. Note the necessity to dilute the CSF and the number of squares counted depends upon the cellularity of the specimen. Adjustments in the procedure should be made accordingly. Both WBCs and RBCs should be counted. If a diluent is required, isotonic saline may be used since it preserves both WBCs and RBCs. A 1 is to 1 dilution is usually adequate to obtain a cell count. If the counts are extremely high, as in WBCs, dilution with Turk's fluid can also be done. RBCs and WBCs are counted separately. Care must be taken to check if the RBCs are crenated or not. In subarachnoid hemorrhage, crenated cells are seen as opposed to normal-looking red cells of a traumatic tap. It is also possible to distinguish between neutrophils and lymphocytes and determine the percentage of each type. Note, the necessity to dilute the CSF and the number of squares counted depends upon the cellularity of the specimen. Adjustments in the procedure should be made accordingly. Both WBCs and RBCs should be counted. Calculation. Cells per microliter is equal to N into 1 into 10 by 9, where 9 is the area counted, N is the number of cells, 1 by 10 is the depth factor, 1 is the dilution. Differential WBC count. Spin the sample at 1500 revolutions per minute for 1 minute. Discard the supernatant and resuspend the sediments in the available fluid. Make a smear from sediment and add any Romanovsky stain such as Leishman stain and allow to stand for 1 minute. Dilute with buffer of pH 6.8 and allow to stand for 3 minutes. When dry, view the slide under microscope and do the differential count of WBCs. A quality assurance mechanism of inter-observer variance, that is, testing by at least two people and analyzing each report, should be done on a periodic basis. Interferences Improper mixing before charging, improper centrifugation, air bubbles, sitting time beyond 20 minutes will result in disintegration of cells. Stain debris. Biochemistry. CSF glucose and protein are measured in same way as done in serum samples. Look for special instructions from the manufacturer regarding programming or calibrators. Normal CSF protein concentration is 14 to 45 milligrams per deciliter. It is derived from the plasma. Note that this result is in milligrams per deciliter rather than grams per deciliter as it is in serum protein determination. Normal CSF glucose is 40 to 80 milligrams per deciliter. Gross appearance. Normal CSF is clear and colorless. CSF opening pressure 50 to 175 millimeters of water. Specific gravity 1.006 to 1.009. Glucose 40 to 80 milligrams per deciliter. Total protein 15 to 45 milligrams per deciliter. Leukocytes 0 to 5 per microliter in adults and children up to 30 per microliter in newborns. Differential counts 60 to 80 percent lymphocytes, up to 30 percent monocytes and macrophages, other cells 2 percent or less. Monocytes and macrophages are somewhat higher in neonates. Negative gram stain. Culture should be sterile. Syphilis serology should be negative. Red blood cell count. Normally, there are no red blood cells in the CSF unless the needle passes through a blood vessels en route to the CSF.